Hi there, it's Sandy Alnock. Welcome to 2020. I'm going to do a quick revisit of 2019. This is a sped up video from a Facebook Live video. If you're interested in watching the whole thing in real time, then you can go over to Facebook and see it in the videos tab. But basically, I found a meme online that had a wreath that half of it was the crown of thorns and half of it was a Christmas wreath. And I did a Christmas-ish page in uh, Matthew 1 where I just drew this overall big outside wreath, this outside circle, and hung mistletoe from it. And I did this with watercolor as the first layer, and then I'll add some watercolor pencil as well. You can combine those kinds of mediums. And if you're not part of our Facebook group, you're most welcome to come and join us. We've had a plethora of people joining us. It's been lots of fun. We're a no sales group, so you're not going to get pressured to buy things. We keep it really simple there. And you're welcome to share your work and ask questions and learn from other people. And if you forget that my videos are here on Sundays, I post those videos over in that group so everybody remembers and that sort of thing. And we just give each other encouragement and prayer throughout the week. So if you're interested in more of that, you're most welcome to come and join us. The video itself is relatively long because, of course, it's two pages. It took me a little while to do. But that's why I figured some of you might get what I'm doing without having to watch the whole thing in slow motion. So if you're that kind of a person, this might help. You could do a page like this without making a Christmas mistletoe thing hanging from it. You could do it for another season in some fashion and make the crown of thorns around the outside and then decorate it in another way. If you want to do something for spring and put a bouquet of flowers in it and, and find some connection that that makes spiritually for you, then you're most welcome to do that. But I was really struck with the connection in that meme that I saw. And, you know, heaven forbid God should work through a meme on the internet and speak to my heart. But really connecting the, the whole Christmas thing with the whole Easter thing in a really super direct way through imagery. And that's one of the things that appeals to me about Bible journaling is that the imagery can speak to us in ways that words sometimes can't get through. But boy, oh boy, as soon as we we start putting imagery and color and textures and those sorts of things to it, in addition to which, when I create a page like this, I don't forget that idea. And I see it come up in my Bible on a regular basis as I thumb through and am reading, so I'm going to be reminded of that truth again and again. That's one of the things that really makes Bible journaling important to me in my, my relationship with the Lord and the study that I do with him and the time that I spend with him, that I can, can have a place to document it so that I remember things because I am a bear of very little brain. <laughs> there you go. For the, uh, the crown of thorns on the outside, I'm making the thorns go all different directions and just drawing these kind of interlocked circles that interweave with each other to make this whole thing go all the way around the whole page. And one of the cool things about this particular page too is I picked Matthew 1 simply because it talks about the genealogy of Jesus and his birth and stuff is on that page, or at least a little bit of it. But there's an empty page across from it. So whenever you're looking through your Bible and looking for a big concept that you want to put out there, a genealogy page, unless you plan to actually study the genealogies, which is, is mind-boggling to me, so I wouldn't end up doing that, it's a great place to put an overall type of Bible journaling page. And you can kind of just work with that big empty space in a different way than you might be able to in other places. And lots of Bibles have the first page blank before every chapter starts. Uh, this particular Bible has a few of them blank here and there, and sometimes... It's just a few words on the left that trail off from the previous chapter. But there's areas in your Bible where you'll have more room to do a kind of bigger concept. And there's nothing that says you have to do something with that particular verse on that page. If you're just looking for a space to do it, and it's important to your spiritual journey to remember it, 
then by all means dive in and do it. So with this one, I just layered the watercolor pencil and the watercolor in all of those little pieces of the mistletoe and left the berries white. Now you could just go back in and draw white berries on top of all that. Might be a little easier than what I did, but there you go. I'm never known for doing things the easy way. But of course I had to add snow to it. I am known for my white pen and since it's winter, I added that. Perfect love at Christ's birth. Perfect love at his death. And doesn't that just sum up his whole life and the gospel all in one fell swoop. So the link to the Facebook group is in the doobly-doo. Please feel free to go and check it out and join us. Share your work and give encouragement to others. And I'll see you again next week.